Hey everyone, it's June 14th and it's Tuesday and you're here with us at the Chaos Weekly Community Call. So we're super happy as always to see everyone. Thank you so much. Um, here's the agenda and I will share. Ta -da. Uh, if you don't mind putting in your name in the agenda and also answer me this question, do you rinse after brushing your teeth? Because I had no idea this was such a controversial thing, but apparently it is. And there are two schools of thought for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, one is you absolutely do not rinse because that takes away all of the fluoride that was in your toothpaste. And if you read the instructions on the toothpaste tube, it says nothing about rinsing ever. So there's like a whole school of people that already knew that and did not have not rinsed with toothpaste ever. I was a rinser and now I'm team anti-rinse. And I have to say, it's, it's pretty great. So. And Sophia has the fluoride issue solved. Yeah, she rinses. Not, not the directions issue. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah my, my mouthwash has fluoride in it as well. So Sophie and I do the same thing. Yeah, okay. I think that you, that, that gets a pass then. Because yeah, I don't you know. know. I what oil pulling? What's that? Oil pulling. I think Vinod put in oil pulling. Yeah, what is yes. that, Vinod? So you, uh, rather than rinsing with, like you rinse with the water, then you gargle with oil, like be it coconut oil, sesame oil. Wow. Never heard that. I have never gums. Heard. It's an ancient way of uh, cleaning or. I have learned so much today already. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Vinod. That's cool. I had no idea. I might yeah. try it. Yeah, so like in summers, I do it with coconut oil. In winters, I do it with sesame oil. You, you gargle your uh, mouth with oil for like five minutes. Then uh, take the oil out and then don't wash it. Let the oil be there so that it strengthens your gum and it changes your uh, saliva and like uh, increase more strength in it. So. Since I've started doing that, my gum bleeding and my other teeth problem have slowly vanished. Amazing. Who knew we were going to have this conversation today? I am in love with this oh. conversation. Yeah, so if you, if you are aware of the ancient medical philosophy, Ayurveda, that is like a thing. If you follow that, it's highly like uh indoors in that that you do every every day in the morning you do that at night as well no not at night in the morning That's then nice. i do the tongue scraper too like you clean your tongue there is a lot of uh, uh i don't know what you call that you clean that it, uh, and then it simulates your test birds too so sometimes i just want to go to bed <laughs> You're like screw your teeth i don't need you you're a lot of work for nothing what do you give me in return yeah same though when i have to like take my contacts out it's a whole process i'm yeah. like I'm just you. no yeah i feel that uh, well thank you everyone for the the diversion that was awesome and thanks for not for educating us all on the process um, before we get started, I just want to thank everyone for being in the waiting room. We're just going to do this for a little bit, just in case, because we had some issues at the Chaos Africa call yesterday. And since the Zoom link is the same, um, we just thought it would be would be safe and put in a little bit of a, a little barrier, just in case we have bad actors that try to come in. So thank you very much for being so patient, everyone. Um, we'll, we won't do this forever, just for a little bit. So if you come to another chaos meeting this week, um, you might have to also wait a little bit, but we will, we will admit you, we promise. Um, so, yeah. I'm guessing if we just watch for like 
this week and then because we have the next two weeks off folks like yourself and i can see if people are joining the waiting room you know what i mean and we can just get a sense of yeah kind of how things go over the course of the next it'd be three weeks at that point yeah yes um the other option we had talked about was assigning a co-host at every meeting uh, one that can someone that can just kind of watch for um inappropriate stuff or code of conduct violations and take care of it right away um, so I don't know if we need to do that yet, but that is uh, on the table as well. So we do have a co-host today, which is Ms. Uh, Sean. Sean. So, yes. Mm, she goes and, about admitting people if they show up or yes. not, if they're not belonging. Correct. And that is the other thing too. So that like the person who's facilitating doesn't have to worry also about admitting and watching and like doing all the things they can focus on. Just, I like that idea anyway, of just always having a co-host. Uh, I kind of like it too. Just, just for that kind of stuff, even if it's just, I don't know, helping with note taking or I don't know, it, there are a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, uh, did, did we, oh, sorry, did we, uh, did we post that Zoom link somewhere that we normally don't post them? Like, did we send it out on a, uh, in a Twitter post or something along those lines? Yeah, it did get shared directly on Twitter, um, and that's what that's what happened. Um, typically, we don't do that just because we that's what we did with the office hours. We also had the same result. So, um, but this was um, just someone trying to help, get, you know, notify the community that this is where things are happening. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't think they knew what was that. Like, obviously, they didn't know that that's what could happen. So, um, that's why also whenever we post anything on Twitter, we make people jump through a little hoop by going through the, to the participate page. You have to kind of dig a little bit to find out how to join the meetings. And it kind of it kind of sucks that like that, we have to do that, but because yeah. um, then it makes it harder for people who actually want to join the meeting to figure out how to do so. Um, so that's unfortunate, but um, just that little bit of, you know, that little tiny barrier is enough to kind of keep the, keep the bad actors away for the most part. Yeah, in the in the future, if we if we create individual pages for some of these calls, it'd be really easy to just direct them to that page, as you said. I think that 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 one extra step where they have to go there to get the Zoom link is probably the most effective security we have, as you said. Agreed. Okay. Um, so thank you, everybody. And then the second thing I just want to quickly ask the chaos con committee uh, committee planning people, do we need to meet today? Because that will help me adjust the agenda accordingly. Depends if we want to decide on who we're accepting today. I think we have June 21st as yeah. our off date. <clears throat> okay, so if we don't need to meet, then that gives us a little more time for the community call. I think we're pretty well set up, aren't we? I mean, we don't have to have the meeting now, but I, I don't think there's any big outstanding issues. I didn't think so either. Okay, well, if we do have something, we can do it async on Slack. Okay. Awesome. Just, a, just a question, like what is the last date of doing the evaluations of the proposals? So we, uh, are currently the chaos con committee yeah 21st of june is when we are going to be done reviewing the cfps and then we will announce or well we will notify speakers on june 23rd and then we announce on july something that i don't remember okay, okay. uh any other questions about that real quick while we're here? No? Okay. So let's go on um, some items from last week. The first one is our burnout and mental health session happening on Friday. Ruth, do you want to speak to this at all? Yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, um, the burnout session is happening on Friday. And we are kind of talking about how maintainers, you know, handle is an interactive session on how maintainers handle burnout. Um, you can see the, you can register to attend with that link. And we have been posting on Twitter as well. We also got like a tweet from GitHub accounts because um, this was the origin, like 
DW Celebrity Men Dinner this month. So um, that was the origin of um, crafting this session. Um, and yeah, our form has about 45 responses. So that's exciting. And I think about um, 50% or 60 are Mentinas. So that's exciting. Um, and also the agenda for that session is we have like a slide um, deck where we get to talk about, yeah, that's like deck, yeah. So we um, do introductions and, you know, participants share the experience on burnout. And we also talk about like the burnout metric and also a need for questions as well. So yeah, if you have anything to, like if you have something to add to it or, you know, throughout the slide, you can go through the slide and, you know, add suggestions um, or anything at all would be appreciated. I think that to do what, what's left um, to do before Friday, send out the emails and invites and I'll work with um, Elizabeth to sort that out. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, thank you for Anyone, I see Sophia left a comment about adding a disclaimer side. A slide on note taking. Okay. And yeah. Write that. Okay. Yeah, we talked about it. And I, I don't mind I don't mind taking a stab at it. I think we had drafted that earlier in a statement because I do think it would be beneficial to take notes. We won't record because I'm assuming that'll be a little bit too invasive, but yeah. um, we can have a statement around note taking just so that we as a community can learn from this exercise is sort of what I was hoping. And I would just share the notes back with the organizers and we can discuss what to do with them afterward. But um, as the note taker, I would be happy to have a disclaimer side and just say, hey, I'm, I'm taking notes and then retreat back into the background and take notes during the session. So if you're comfortable with that, Ruth, I'll I'll take a stab yeah, at adding her slide. You can add it on the slide, no problems. Totally okay. comfortable. Thank you, Sophia. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for taking the lead on this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, this is excellent. Does anyone have any other questions or comments about this session? No, it's exciting. Um, we may also uh, want to have a co-host <laughs> available for that. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, I don't know if we want to have that person uh, volunteer right now or reach out to Ruth. If, if nobody wants to do it, I absolutely can do it. So I don't mind. Um, but if someone else wants to do it, I don't want to steal that opportunity away from someone else. So. I mean, I'll be there, but I, I, I didn't want to be too present if I wasn't a host. but I always have questions and can be a punchy interjector if we need to be. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I love having those at uh, talks that I give, like little plants in the audience that will like generate a question that I know the answer to, because I, I hate when I get questions I don't know the answer to. So I always try to have someone that I know that can like, you know, throw some softballs at me that I can answer. So, yeah. I have a question. What approach are we taking towards the burnt out session? Educational, I think. So I'd characterize yeah, because what I'm hearing. The, the thing it's, uh, I was, my concern might be it's a complicated topic. So if we listen to people more than we try to give them a lot of advice from some professional stand, which is not our main focus. Uh, because we know there are co-founding factors that will happen around that area. And uh, it, it deals a lot with domains that really goes deeper than uh, in clinical psychology and things like that, which is not really our main focus. So if we could listen more than we try to give uh, a kind of uh, therapeutic kind of approach, I'm just being concerned we should not create an atmosphere where we are trying to do some, you know, people who may have other conditions that may necessarily need some different kind of follow-up 
might listen to us as oh no expert told us this and that when they don't have proper follow-ups but if we share our experiences and create atmosphere where people really share i think i raised this thing earlier on and it's just something i'm wondering how we will approach it yeah it's a very good uh, platform for people to i mean it's a wonderful idea it's just we just think about it like the approach we are using might change the dynamics so i'm wondering armstrong if i'm looking at that slide deck could you go back to that elizabeth um i don't know just scroll down to like maybe four or five yeah like maybe asking people how or go to five actually like how like instead of saying here are the strategies um saying how do you as a community develop strategies yeah. Like yeah. That? yeah yeah because now when people are sharing their experiences we can learn from one another we should not really be a source of reference of telling people, oh, do like this. We are not experts in this domain. Right. That's good. But I like that too, because it'll generate conversation in the hour. Okay. Do we need to put that in this slide deck somewhere to just explain? Yeah, I'll, I can work on it just a little bit to make that clearer. Sounds good. Thanks, Armstrong. Um, any other questions, comments about the burnout session? Okay, let's move on. Um, next thing on the agenda, the Google Season of Docs evaluations are due soon. So if you are working on those projects, heads up. Time, yeah. Anything else to add to that? No, I think we don't we have like five days. I was looking at that calendar yeah. invite you could put out there, Elizabeth, or like kind of just yeah. for the mentors. I think it's like a five day window starting mm -hmm. tomorrow. Yes, I think I so. Tell right. if it was starting tomorrow or starting today, but yeah. Okay, so we can talk about that maybe off. Line. Like, I'm not sure. I'll have to look and see like where to submit that and like what that process is because I don't, I don't recall. But thank you for the reminder for sure. Um, another reminder, no meetings. We said it before, I will say it again. No meetings for the next two weeks with the exception of any mentorship things that need to happen, regular check-ins, regular um stand-ups however things are going on the projects if you are a mentor or a mentee those meetings absolutely can happen but <clears throat> regular chaos meetings so like this meeting working group meetings uh office hours like those are all canceled and if you are in the general channel of the slack you have seen a big wall of notifications telling you <laughs> telling you all of those things so sorry about the noise but um yeah Hopefully everyone got that message and doesn't show up uh, to meet with themselves solo next week on the chaos Zoom. I kind of actually like that a lot, um, having that mid-year break, kind of like how we do at the end of the year too. It just kind of helps us. I, I thought we could, because we have the waiting room, we have the waiting room for the next, um, uh, whatever, three weeks or so. We can, there's a method you can put in the waiting room Oh, so like when somebody enters the waiting room, we could even I can update that that would just say, hey, no meetings, you know, for the next two weeks kind of thing. Interesting. I did not know that that was a thing. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Just to add to that, the web content meetings are actually going to uh, still continue. Uh, we won't be we won't be taking the uh, the week off. Makes sense, and that's because we have some Google Summer of Code students that are working on projects. So we've kind of been using that meeting as a 
check in with them as well. Yeah, okay. and we're and we're on a yeah we have we have active work being done and and we're also on a, a little bit of a time deadline. <laughs> so. Time so okay. And we did add those back to the calendar. So in case anybody was wondering, <laughs> that's, what, that's what all that was about. Um, okay, so let's move on. Um, next one is we were gonna have a quick working group update from Vinod about the value working group. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. So in value working group, we, uh, in the past meetings, we have reviewed previously release metrics and uh, thank you, uh, Kevin, for looking at those and creating issues on that. So we are slowly, gradually going in the review process of old metrics. And second is uh, we had a discussion on the handbook because we have four things going on, community repo, community handbook, knowledge base, read docs. So, and from those four, two will be retained in the class. So that was a discussion we had in the meetings. And also, uh, it will discuss how to encourage asynchronous updates. Like our meetings are very heavy uh, synchronously. We meet there, we do the work in the meetings, but how we encourage uh, offline, like through Slack or other ways, that's what we discussed in the previous meetings. So community is more than welcome to think on the ways we can in, uh, encourage asynchronous communication in our community. And uh, there was a proposal also on the chaos session for the ospology. Uh, in ospology, uh, they do various like talks uh, and it was invited, uh, like if you want to do some session on from the chaos side, we can write a proposal over there and present something from the chaos. So mm -hmm. this is open to the entire community. Uh, and the uh, last thing we discussed was the project awareness model, uh, which was like project popularity metric, which has turned out to be a model and slowly we are also working on that. Once it's more developed, it will be moved to the metric model of Google as a proposed model. So that's all from the value working group side. Awesome, thank you, Vinod. Anyone have questions for Vinod? And value meets on Thursdays. Well, when we come back from break. Yeah, no one's gonna remember. So just look at the calendar and when we come back. Tomorrow, I guess we have a meeting, then we'll be off. Oh, not tomorrow, day after tomorrow. Thursday, yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, right, we do meet this week, so. All right, any questions from anybody? Okay, let's move on to project badging update. I'm guessing this is Matt G. Uh, yep, so I think right now, I just want people to know that these are the four metrics that we seem to be kind of settling on. Newcomer experience, project burnout, recognizing contributors and inclusive leadership. Um, and I think I was looking specifically at newcomer experience, recognizing contributors and inclusive leadership, um, kind of as a, as a triangle of, of asking people, asking people about um, how within their communities they have designed their community to uh, create a positive newcomer experience. So that would kind of be the first one. And then how, that's like maybe the top of the triangle. And then recognizing contributors is about really recognizing um, all the work that people do within a project, whether it's code contributions or event planning um, or podcast management, you know, kind of that whole thing. So just kind of the wide array of, of things and how you recognize people. Um, and then the third being inclusive leadership as to how uh, people kind of have a path to growth within the community and can take on, on positions of leadership. So between newcomer experience, uh, new, uh, recognizing contributors and inclusive leadership, really, I think can take us from kind of a design perspective and kind of getting people into the project 
And then once they're in the project, kind of recognizing all the work that can occur within that project. And then third, you know, what's the path towards towards leadership? So I was trying to think of, of, of why we would have some of these metrics together in the first place. So I don't know what people's thoughts are on that, but that's kind of where I'm at. And this is also from just listening to all of the conversations and badging and DEI and all that kind of stuff. So I see newcomer experience and project burnout and recognizing contributors from our discussions as and, and inclusive leadership is the, the more difficult of these four. And I think these are all metrics models conceptually. And inclusive leadership is the more difficult to measure, but it's it's um, still measurable. We can look at different characteristics of it. I was actually going to say project burnout seems to me like the most difficult. To, we haven't quantified to, metrics to, for that yet, but I, I think they're derivable from things like bus factor or. So remember for badging, really what we're asking is how projects address these things. And so that's really, it's kind of like um, when we do the event badging reviews. So we have things like uh, event demographics. We're simply asking how event organizers uh, attend to like measure and then attend to and share demographics uh, for an event. And so there are a variety of different ways that these things can be measured or kind of put forward. And so as part of the badging experience, we're just really asking the applicants to reflect and articulate in, in whatever ways they are, are um, in whatever ways are, are useful for their community uh, and then express that as part of the application. So I don't know that we need to look at like which one is more difficult or less difficult. It's just about how projects um, may attend to these things. I mean, I guess I'm saying we do have some objective ways of giving projects information about we do how they're yes. doing things. And I would expect to incorporate that yeah, in the we do. process. Yeah. Yes, 100%. And the yeah. newcomer experience is actually the only one on this list that we don't have a metric for at the moment. So we, we have to write that. I would argue that um, newcomer retention is a metric that speaks to that. That might not be a defined metric, but it's implemented. <laughs> uh, well, well, welcomeness. Lagging. Sorry. It's Sophia? a lagging indicator. So, I mean, it, it is a measure of it versus proactive measure, which could be a little bit more subjective, like onboarding mm -hmm. materials, tagging, yeah. handbook guides, mentorship. Um, which are a little bit harder to measure objectively without being in the community. The the project welcomeness model is directly related to that that newcomer experience as well. Yeah, no, that's that's good. And Sophia, were you saying that newcomer experience experience was related to newcomer well, retention? Yeah. yeah, I was saying Sean yeah. Sean's mention of. Um, retention over time, like newcomer retention. Oh, yeah. That's a, it's a lagging indicator of whether or mm -hmm. not we are actively able to bring on new people successfully. Yep. Okay. And to your point about the welcomingness model, we do take pieces of that. I feel like that model is pretty well represented in the entire badging application because we do ask things about license. We, you know, and I know that that was a piece of the welcomingness model. So it's it's kind of like we've taken that model and kind of split it out into chunks. Would you agree yeah. with that, Matt? Yeah, I agree with that. John, yeah. Yeah, I can actually. Um, here, hold on just a second. I'll get. Uh, I think I've shown this before here. I'm not sure. You want to yeah. share? I can stop. Um. Yeah. Sure. So this is to that point. This is the what the submission would look like. Mm -hmm. 
the DEI.MD link, that's the where they respond to how they attend to the four different metrics that were on that list. So we'd have the DEI.MD file, which is, well, I'll show you it later, but basically that's the file that we asked them to place in their community repo that really articulates how they attend to those metrics. And then the rest should be fairly straightforward. So this is the issue that they would submit to your point then Elizabeth, that we do kind of with welcomingness kind of have a variety of those things mm -hmm. kind of embedded in this issue. Right. So yeah, the yeah, ones I was mentioning. Those four, it's a, a, a bunch of other things too that we require code of conduct. Yeah. All the metrics I referenced are in fact in community welcoming this. Can you share the, the DEI MD file? I'm just curious how prescriptive you are in terms of the metrics they should be reporting on to yeah, speak sure. to those four. So again, I'm missing one right now. I don't have inclusive leadership in here. And so I think there were some earlier comments, like make sure you link out to the metric just mm -hmm. so they can get some bearings on what we're even asking about. <laughs> um. And at this point, again, we're just asking, as part of the, the badging process, we're just asking projects to, to be um, like attentive to these metrics, like how as a community are you being attentive to the newcomer experience? We don't have like what might be like excellent and what might be bad. We're not, we don't have a scale like that. We're just trying from a review perspective to say, hey, it's, it's great. It does look like you as a project are attending to the newcomer experience and the things that you do, like you're involved in mentorship. Um, yeah. You have office hours, whatever, whatever it is that your project might do. And it might be different across many different projects. I think I think it's important that project badging serve kind of a insight and educational role so mm -hmm. that it's we do give people we're not giving them judgment right like there's no, no red yellow yes. green. <laughs> I think showing them some insights from the metrics that we have would be very helpful to having it be more than just us reviewing things but actually giving them a perspective on their projects that yeah. they may they may not have right now. And yep. in fact, giving them that insight, I think, would possibly contribute to a better understanding of what contributor burnout might look like. Because it's, I mean, maintainer burnout, excuse me. Sophia, do you have a comment too? Yeah, I was just also thinking that the process itself is going to be a feedback mechanism to like building on Sean's point. Not only is laying out these are the criteria that you should be thinking about and you answer them in the context as appropriate to you, but if we go through and collect data around, I don't know, 10 different projects, I'm really excited just to see how other projects are approaching measuring burnout, measuring newcomer experience. And it might give us a whole new slew of ideas and approaches that we haven't considered as a community. So I don't know, I guess I'm curious if we have any way to communicate back to the submitters what we do with this information. Like we're, we're collecting it for the purpose of badging, mm -hmm. but in, in our other badging programs, we've been very explicit about ensuring that no one else sees your data because you are sharing sensitive demographic information about your event profile or attendee profile rather. Whereas this is a maybe less sensitive, but still could be sensitive depending on how they answer it. Um, so I guess I guess I'm talking myself into another requirement I'd like to see is some kind of communication either that we add to our data privacy statement or to this badge program language that either commits to or commits not to do something else with this information. Because I think it could be a really valuable learning experience for the broader community, but only if we let people know that upfront that we might be abstracting what we learned from these things and sharing it back as an abstracted learning experience. Not like saying project X does yeah. this, but many projects said they measure X in order to promote Y. Maybe I could add that. I don't know if it's here, but in something like this, like we have the guidelines and the requirements for submission, but like in the guidelines, because the reality is that everything that is 
uh, reviewed is done in a public issue. So it's, it's inherently made <laughs> public just okay. in the review process by itself. And so maybe that needs to be clearer here. Just like, just FYI, <laughs> this, these are, and, and the issue does itself provide um, um, unique ways that projects will be doing this type of work for other projects to look at. Um, so that's, it, it's valuable in itself, but to your point as well, it, it may also um, not be something they wanna share all the time. So I don't know how to balance that. Okay. We have I, been transparent uh, in our in our other badging programs. Yeah, the, the event badging. The event badging is the issue is why it's just we're sitting right there. You can go look at any discussion. And that was an important part of the badging process too, that we wanted it to be open and transparent, that we didn't have it kind of behind uh, some curtain where we weren't sure kind of how projects were being, you know, badged. Um, so we wanted to be very open about that. And also to to these comments, like right now, I mean, all that we are, all that we would propose to provide is passing. Mm -hmm. So for event badging, we have gold, three levels, silver, and passing. Maybe I kind of forget. Do we have bronze or is it we just bronze? Passing? Yeah, and, okay. and passing. And then there's pending if they're like not passing. We don't say failure. We just say pending. <laughs> Ending, yeah. We don't have the bar here is we have one. <laughs> it's just whether or not they're attending to these to these particular metrics. So if they're if their response if their responses are kind of open ended and they can kind of uh, answer these questions however they see fit, uh, as a project, should we should we be going and, and doing uh, some sort of content analysis on these responses. Um, well, there are times where we ask. We have, I mean, in the review process, we have asked for, like, where do you post this information? Could you please share that link? You know, if there's a claim made that there's that they're sharing of that information. But no, I don't think we need to do a, a content analysis of their website or their GitHub repository. No, of of their responses. Of the uh, the open ended questions where we ask them how they are uh, how they are attending to these things. Mm, I don't I don't think so. At least that's not that sounds pretty formal. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I am definitely referring to like a, a formal content analysis process to to maybe yeah. pull pull out some some themes reoccurring themes that oh oh we yeah i mean we could maybe not part of the review process but to sophia's point like as we're collecting this information it might be interesting to see recurring themes yes the, from. yeah yeah my comment was was uh directed towards sophia's comment oh yeah 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 i think that's a, that, that's a really good idea that we could do something formal against a, a larger set of submissions mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that's I was going to add to kind of to Sophia's point, but the process of filling out the application we found um, also causes the, well, in the event badging side anyway, causes the event organizers to kind of evaluate themselves as they're going through the application. So just filling out the application, regardless of what they end up with, is, is a valuable process in and of itself. So I think, um, you know, even if someone doesn't decide to go for a badge here, just going and answering the questions and like having to do that self-evaluation and, and introspection of your project is, is super valuable too. So just on an individual project level, I think. All right, anything else to add or discuss at this time about project badging? Looks like we should do a blog or a podcast. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. And next week, hopefully. Yeah, it's not ready. We have, there are a few things. So, I mean, at this point, like, even if we have this process kind of set in place, we have, there are a number of things that we need to still do, which would be like recruiting reviewers, having a reviewer onboarding process. Um, and Ayush is helping Elizabeth with like the bot activity. So we could have like just a single bot help with um, 
event badging and with project badging like there are just certain things that we still have to kind of work out but this is mm -hmm. really kind of the main component but I, th I think we're still several months away from potentially releasing this i would uh i would volunteer to lead a, a content analysis effort on some of these responses uh if uh done if that's desired so and that that well, could be want to do it for, yeah we want to do it for event badging too and i yeah. can do a reliable tag for that like as a okay Thanks. i would really i would really be uh interested in the uh themes around burnout because I'm, I'm super curious what people are doing or if they're doing anything okay. thank you I think it's something the community is struggling with, but I think we'll get to some insights by running this program where we are. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, let's go back to the agenda now. See where we are. Uh, thanks, Matt. Thanks, Kevin, Sophia, everybody who contributed to that discussion. Uh, we have four minutes left. Uh, Ruth, you want to talk about Chaos Africa real quick? Yeah, sure. Uh, so we, yesterday was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we did have the first meeting yesterday. And I think I start with the good news first. So we, we had like um, over 25 persons joined and, you know, were curious about the Chaos Project. Uh, we had a very an interesting conversation around, uh, you know, I kind of like explained what we do at Chaos and what Chaos Africa will focus on and um, about async communication. Initially, I did not want to, I did not want to open a channel, but I wanted like community involvement in that. I wanted to ask the question to the community of what they preferred and, you know, we settled on a public channel in the chaos um, Slack. So we have like a channel, um, Chaos Africa dash Africa. So we, a lot of persons joined in um, from that call as well, which is really exciting. And we also talked about something very interesting. Someone brought it up, someone who was like one of the folks that joined as a designer. So, um, Kinsley uh, was trying to, you know, um, brought up an idea where we could create focus groups so that different people with like someone that is a designer, developer, you know, technical writer, focus groups that um, they could um, interact and know how they could help. So that's something we also we can ask like little focus groups within Chaos Africa. So um, everybody um, gets to know, understand how to contribute to Chaos. So yeah, so we are, we we've started that already and yeah it's it's exciting the bad news part is we got spammed <laughs> uh, uh we got spammed um towards uh, i think 20 minutes in the call you know with a whole lot of uh we had to use like a google meet because then the meeting link was kind of compromised so it wasn't working even when i was trying to like kick them off so we had to use a google meet and we still had um you know, more persons still join the Google Meet regardless of the spamming, so that, that was exciting. So yeah, I'm excited to keep going forward with it. Awesome job handling all of that, Ruth, by the way, for the very first meeting, that was a lot to handle. So excellent job, handled like a champ. Any questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you, Ruth, for leading this effort. This is really just fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's very, very, very exciting. And I put the Slack channel in here, Chaos Africa, if someone wants to join who is not in there and would like to be, that's where you can find them. Um, and again, thanks again, Ruth, just for doing such a great job with this. It's really exciting. Sure. Uh, we have one minute left, and I just put this on here. Uh, we can talk about it next time. 
but um, we have a lot of moving parts on the cast calendar these days between regular meetings and I know um, people and as well they should feel free to use that for um, chaos or GSOC mentorships whatever we need to I just want people to kind of think about how we can manage that chaos calendar so if I want to block off a little chunk how do I know if it's available or if I'm going to crash into somebody else we also record chaos tasks on the same zoom link as well so um yeah just think about that if it's the calendly that you sign up for. like I don't know what the answer is but I can just foresee like some things crashing into each other and overlapping because they're not really represented anywhere fully on any calendar. So everybody just think about that. Can we make um, like a bunch of, not a bunch, but several different Zoom channels? I don't, I think that's the question for the LF because we are on their account. And I think that maybe we had looked into that in the past. I don't remember. Um, okay. But maybe we can look into that. Because I was thinking like a mentorship channel, you know. Uh, I know. I mean, you can you can create stable, yeah, stable Zoom multiple, yeah, stable we, yeah. Zoom Links. Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. I, I have four that are just assigned to my account uh, that are just always open. So that would be mm -hmm. instead of the standard Zoom channel, we would have a custom link for each routinely scheduled meeting, which is a little bit more. Well, a little more difficult to make sure that you're getting to the right place. You definitely have to go. I wasn't thinking calendar. each one. I was thinking like the regular weekly meetings that we have, for example, that we don't have like for two weeks. That would still just be on this channel. But like we'd have a Zoom channel for mentorship. You know, it's kind of like this other and then maybe a Zoom channel for podcasts. Yeah. Yeah, that, that podcast channel probably needs to be kind of locked down a little bit, right? <laughs> right, and it's not at all. Like, you have a chaos path calendar, but nobody sees that but me, I think. And so um, I try to make sure, but it's like my manual eyes, just trying to make sure that nothing is crashing into each other. But I don't always know, like if somebody, you know, has scheduled a one-on-one -on -one with their men mentee mentor, and that doesn't show up anywhere on the official chaos calendar. So like there's no way for me to know if that space is open right now. I if feel I feel like you've just invited me to start bombing the uh, the podcast recordings. <laughs> yes, I'm not responsible for that at all. Just, just drop in, just drop in in the middle of the recording to say hi. Like, what's up? Yes, what's going on? I, I can look into that, into making channels for each of those things. I like the uh, I like the idea of limiting it to three. Yeah, I have a so, sneaking suspicion to get to exactly what you're thinking about, Matt. There's a different level of Zoom subscription. <laughs> I mean, it's it's possible. It's possible. We might be able to do it with, if it's regularly scheduled stuff. We can do it with those kinds of links. Yeah, maybe right? that's the solution is having them all scheduled through Zoom and not just mm -hmm. pop the link out everywhere. So, okay. That does let you have separate links for different meetings. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We are three minutes over. I'm so sorry. And um, Sean, are you okay to do a, an update on risk next next time we meet? Yes, Sophia and I will pull that off, but that won't be till July. So yeah, it's like forever and a day from now. Yes. July fifth. Oh yes, I should put that in here. Next meeting here is what July July fifth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll write it in here somewhere. I feel like Sean. I'm not even gonna remember what happened like a month ago because we're not gonna. Have I was. Th I then. was thinking that too, <laughs> that you know, it's like this is a great time to serve us up. Um, you know what? We should, let's take a pass on the July 5th meeting and just say there won't be a working group update then, and give us all time yeah. to meet. We can do the next one. So we'll say next. Next. <clears throat> like July 12th, <laughs> we'll do that update. Well, I as think. As long as good long catch, long Sophia. Long. I was. I was feeling a little chicken to say that, but. Yeah, you can say it, it's good. Well, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting ready to go on vacation and I don't think I'm gonna retain anything after two weeks, so. No. Yeah. Nor will I. Uh, and I also am gonna be going on vacation starting July 1st until July 25th. I will be back, I'm taking three weeks off. Apologies to everyone, but y'all have to figure all of this stuff out. I'll, I'll write it down for somebody, whoever. You are allowed to have a life and I think we can <laughs> handle, I think we know how to operate Zoom, so. <laughs> Maybe I'll be unpacked and organized 
like yeah. as you can see. So when you see me again, I'll have a totally different background and a totally different house. Exciting. Uh, right. Anyway. As long as you keep the rug, because it really ties the room together. Keep the rug. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Wait, are you, are you moving? I am Saturday. Yeah, so. And it's supposed to be like 8,000 degrees. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Well, good luck. Thank you. Uh, all right. Sorry, everybody. Um, we'll see you all soon. July 5th. Come back. See us. And enjoy the little break. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.